And now let's just confound a narrative we have. You know, if we look at this Edward Muybridge video of an elephant walking, oh, this is probably a, a circus elephant, I imagine, but looking at the way it's moving. And I've read several articles that have said that the gait of elephants in captivity is quite different to elephants in the wild. And it's funny because we have this idea that because elephants are big, and you know, it sort of looks a bit lumbering in, in that this particular video, that they're cumbersome. But nothing could be further from the truth. They place their feet down silently. And so they're really deaf. You know, I've spoken to several people who said they've been surprised by them in the bush. You know, they they just <laughs> they just turn around and there's a bloody elephant there. Just imagine something that big <laughs> being so close to you. Um, and 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 another woman in, on Tuesday who's from South Africa said you only hear them eating. You know, like crunching leaves, or you never actually hear them moving. So they're really so adept at transferring their weight. And this is interesting. If you look at the skeleton, see they're walking on their toes. They've got that really large, um, um, you know, pad that they stand on, but uh, the, at the back of the pad, if we go up one, you know, this section through here, it's sort of a fatty, you know, all this under here is a, f is a big fatty pad. Actually, I'm not sure what else is in there, but it, but notice that it has a similar body plan to us. It, you know, has a skull and a spine and ribs, sacrum, pelvis and shoulder girdle, and one long bone here, and then two bones at the forelimbs, and then this uh, uh, ankle and wrist, and then these long bones for the toes. You know, they only have nine thoracic vertebrae, where we have 12, and they have 26 ribs. So it's different. And of course, they have a tail. And the thing about limbs is, is that they get more differentiated as they get toward the extremities. So, you know, force can be expressed in one direction through here. Well, it can rotate but really it's through this line, whereas when you have two bones, it introduces another degree of freedom. And when you have all this collection of bones down here, that's, you know, whole other range. And with us, that, you know, with our opposable finger and thumb and, you know, ability to greatly, uh, to rotate our forearm, we have tremendous dexterity in our hands. But it, you know, we're, today we're going to look at the moment of freedom, because how do we actually lift ourselves up? How do we go from being on our bellies to being up on all fours and then all threes and then all, on all twos and then when we walk well to be all on one, support our weight on one? How do we actually go cut through the field of gravity so it feels effortless? There is a trick to it. That's what we're going to explore today. So. You know, at first, when we lift ourselves up, generally it's going to be on the elbows rather than the hands because it takes a while to, for this to become strong. But look at the way, let's just look at the way an elephant moves a bit more. So if we, <laughs> this one here, they, w they walk on average about four kilometers an hour. But they can run up to, an African elephant can run up to, oh sorry, an Indian elephant can run, Asian elephant can run up to 25 kilometers an hour. Fast as human, you know, like an Olympic sprinter will go 36 kilometers an hour. So that's pretty damn fast. And, you know, they crawl in a particular way that's related to the, er the earliest stage of crawling we do, homolateral crawling. We're at the the limbs on one side move first, then the limbs on the other side move. And like cats, 
they put their rear feet in the, in the they, they walk in their own footsteps. Notice how as it's charging, it's about to turn over a car, this elephant. Notice how its feet, they're in a line like that. And if we look at this one, man, that's an amazing sight, isn't it? But it's how it places its feet down. The lady in uh, Barbara from South, practitioner from South Africa, was talking about how soft uh, an elephant's ankle is. You know, y if you hold it, it's just so fluid the way it moves. And the thing is, it's walking on its toes, like, you know, which is the way humans dance. How does it do that? It's a really interesting thing, isn't it, this picture? So it's, they don't rotate like a, a quadruped or someone who does the next stage of crawling, we call contralateral, which is where you rotate. But so generally an elephant's going to move one, you know, one, one, one limb at a time. They move them very quickly. But you can see this, you know, it's really stable through here. And with that stability, it's able to move this limb so effortlessly. And it's really remarkable to the, um, you know, the trunk, which is so powerful, 40,000 muscles in the trunk. And yet it's sensitive enough to, to pick up a single blade of grass. You know, that, I love that photo that I sent out in my email with it just touching its tusk with the tip of its trunk. And, you know, the tongue is a really interesting thing for crawling, for us as well, because we understand so much through taste. You know, we understand really uh, uh, the world, uh, our relationship to the world through taste. So, you know, babies, they put everything in their mouth, don't they? Or they're putting their tongue on it. You know, it's a curious thing, this idea of, you know, the gut sense of something. Elephants can hear, they, they have tremendous sense of smell. They can smell water from 12 kilometers away, apparently. And they listen, they're very fantastic hearing as well. So they can place their feet and their trunk on the ground and listen for distant rumbles, listen for sounds through the earth. So they, they put their trunk down as well. You know, when we lift our body, when we're babies, and we just learn to, you know, first of all, we have to learn to lift the head. We're moving beyond that stage. We're assuming we've already done that. Which, and we do that by rolling over. We organize the muscles of the trunk so we can lift our head, which is giant compared to our limbs when we're babies. But then we lift ourselves up. And we have to lift the head and the whole body on these tiny little limbs. You know, and so the gut is, is quite a bit of that weight as well. So being able to sense inside ourselves, to feel our entire mass, is really important. How do we do it? Let's just explore that. <laughs> so, um, could you just pin my video here? So lie down on your stomach. And you may want a cushion or something to put under your forehead. Maybe something under your shoulders because if you could lie down on your stomach with your arms and legs outstretched, you know, as if you're Superman or woman flying through the air. And if you have your head resting on a book or a cushion or something, maybe you can save your nose if 
tucking your chin isn't so easy. And lie here and sense how you settle. And if it's not so comfortable for you being in this position, then, you know, that's going to be a process of learning to relax. Those tensions that you don't need, And notice as you do that, as you start to soften, the extent of your body image. You know, where do you feel your middle now? Sense the way you move as you breathe. The pressure on the floor as you breathe in and breathe out. Maybe the way your back rises and falls as you breathe. And isn't that nice, your back may be rising and falling as your shoulders and your legs can drop, sink into the floor. And now roll your pelvis side to side. Roll your pelvis side to side and see if you can let, allow your legs to be where they are. See, your legs are passive. It's just your pelvis that's moving side to side. So when that happens, when your legs are just lying there, you know, you can feel the inside and outside of the toes on the floor. There's all those muscles that connect from the pelvis down onto the leg on the inside and the outside and the front and the back of your leg that are being moved. You know, so your knees can stay where they are or they're being pulled passively, but just feel how all the muscle in your leg is moved when you roll your pelvis. And the effect of that right down to your toes. Big toes on the inside, little toes on the outside. And maybe you can feel your belly rolling too, and your rib cage. You know, because your whole spine is moving. Right up to your head. And as your spine is moving by your pelvis rolling side to side, that means it's probably the rib cage is sliding underneath the shoulder girdle. You know, maybe your shoulders are being moved ever so slightly side to side, so perhaps you can feel the difference right through to the hands, to the inside and outside of each hand.
and maybe roll your head at the same time you roll your pelvis. You feel the way the whole torso is rolling. Head, neck and torso and you know, think of the, uh, you know, as if you're flying through the air, like you're some sort of superhero scanning the earth as you fly over it. You know, your hands and your feet are parallel with the ground whilst your torso is rotating. And you could manipulate either one hand or one leg and, you know, change the way you're flying through the air. And in fact, could you sense your midline right down the middle of your body, you know, from the crown of your head th through the middle of the brain, so, you know, each side of the brain down between the eyes. And each side of your nose. Each side of your tongue, from the top of the tongue right down to the underside of your chin. Through the center of your larynx. down through the center of your torso, between the lungs and the kidneys, and the gonads, down through the center of the pelvis. So you divide the body in half. And think of each limb, you know, it's almost like a quadrant the torso, really the whole torso, out to that limb. Four of them interlock. Because the each limb is an extension of the whole head, neck and torso. So think of the four of them as you're flying above the earth here. Woven together through your head, neck and torso and able to move together. And move your tongue side to side as you do this. You know, your tongue, which is also woven, all those muscles woven together. Now, in this, just leave that for a moment. You know, how do we get up from here? How do we begin to lift our body? You know, with your arms and legs in this position now, just lift your pelvis a few times. Just lift only as far as is comfortable. You know, how much capacity do you have to move around with your pelvis here? And try your head your head up with your arms outstretched. And then leave that and roll onto your back and rest for a moment. And you can still probably sense your front that was pressing onto the ground. So sense the front relative to the back now. To get a sense of the depth 
of your body. And you know, think of each limb as an extension of the whole head, neck, and torso. That means they intersect through the torso. And roll your head and your pelvis here slowly side to side. You know, you can roll your pelvis by just flexing one buttock. Move your tongue side to side. You know, so you feel the front and back of your torso. You know, the sense of weight, the sense of volume within your head, neck and torso. sense of life. And notice as you're doing that, the sense of volume and life that you have through your arms and legs. You know, each arm and leg able to support you. You know, if you're a gymnast, you can stand on one hand, jump on one hand. If you're not a gymnast, that probably seems impossible. You know, in the sense of volume and weight and life that you have in your head, neck and torso, probably seems greater than what you would experience through your arm and your hand. at the moment. It's how everything works together that's interesting. See, notice, we're going to roll over onto your stomach again in a minute. Notice how some things lift, some things press into the floor. You know, how each side coordinates, how each arm and leg coordinates. So roll onto your stomach now. Have your um, forehead on the, the on the ground again, the arms and legs extended as before. Just notice, does it feel different now? Are you more softened? And if you roll your head and your pelvis side to side, you know, is it easier? Now leave that. Or actually, roll. Keep rolling, but roll to the right, and roll a little bit further with your pelvis. So you roll your pelvis over to the left till you feel you could move your right knee out to the side. And you could roll your head a little bit too, you know, to make it easy. And notice when you roll your pelvis to the left, it becomes easy to roll your right leg out to the right. Whereas if you, see, roll your pelvis right over to the left, and then it's, you know, the, le the right leg feels unencumbered, doesn't it? You can move it up and down. We'll come back again to the, to the middle, 
Leave your pelvis flat and now just try moving your right knee out to the side with your legs pelvis flat. You have to fight against the right side of the torso, don't you? Well, roll the pelvis to the left again. Move your right leg out to the right just a little way, not too far. And feel with the right leg out to the right that, you know, if you push on it, you, you can you push on the knee and the foot, you can sort of move yourself over to the toward the left shoulder. Well, s stay in this easy position, but now try raising your pelvis. Press down on both knees and notice how you can move your pelvis over to the right. Is it easier to lift here with your leg in this position? And let your leg back down, come back to the middle. See, try this time moving the left leg out to the side without lifting the left hip. Just, you know, keep the left leg flat, the left hip flat, and just move the left leg out to the side. You know, to do that, you've got to do a lot of distortions, don't you? You not only have to flatten the, the left side of your pelvis, you have to flatten your rib cage too. You've really got to hold yourself down to do that. It's a lot more effort than if you now roll the pelvis over to the right and let your rib cage and your head move a little bit and now move the the knee out to the side so you move the weight of the pelvis over to that side and it becomes easy to move that limb and now keep this left knee out to the side push on it a little bit just to feel that you know with that lever out to the side like that, you can push yourself over toward the right chest, right side of your chest or shoulder. And then press down on the knees and feel how you can lift your pelvis here. It's relatively easy with your knees lifted up like this, or out to the side or spread, to be able to move your pelvis. Now, leave that, come back to the middle with your arms outstretched still and lift your head up again and just feel what it takes to lift your head and your rib cage. It's much easier if you lift the rib cage, if you just lift the head it'll be hard work. But now, place your hands down by your side, by your chest. You know, palms on the floor, elbows on the floor. Now lift your head and your chest. You know, you can push on the elbows here. Is it easier? Now, vary the position. Have your right elbow out to the right. Slide your right elbow a little bit further out to the right and forward. And now press on the elbows to lift yourself up. Does that make a difference? And if you have your right elbow out to the side and you push on the left, is it, does it make it possible to lift yourself up over the right elbow with less effort? Experiment with that. Try it, you know, move your hand in, into your arm, the right hand and arm into different positions and feel, you know, if you have them spread in some way differently, that you can use each of the limbs to move your torso. You can shift your weight so it goes over the one, one side. Try it with the left too. You know, shift your left elbow out to the side and press down on both elbows and feel how you can raise your ribcage over to the side a little bit, but how much effort it takes to come up.
And that's an interesting thing. You know, you lift your head up and you move over to one side. The head and the rib cage move to that side. Does the pelvis begin to turn? Well, you know, lift yourself up onto that side, let the pelvis turn and move the leg out to the side. And now press down on both knees and lift your pelvis. Now this is different when you have your elbows up. We've got four points of contact, but due to the way they're spread, we're sort of sliding sideways to come up. You know, as your pelvis lifts, you may find that your your head moves in opposite directions. So, you know, the whole torso adjusts. It's moving sideways rather than straight up. Play with that. You know, where is it for you? Is there a particular organization of your elbows? You could move the other elbow or the other knee, you know, sh shift the right arm out to the side. Press down on both elbows and it shifts yourself over to the right elbow. Then your left knee can bend. And then press on the knees and the elbows and lift your pelvis up here. And feel, you know, where can you place your arms where it's r and, your el and your knees so that it's simple to lift. You know, you get maximum leverage. And when you lift, both sides, you know, it moves, you know, you're pressing on the knees and the elbows, maybe more on one than the other, and that your head and your pelvis, the whole torso move in this funny way, and move together in order to lift yourself up and down. Well, leave that for a moment. Let's lie on your back and rest. feels different now, doesn't it? Yeah. Both sides of your torso, and you know, from front to back, head, neck, and torso, but now also your limbs, your upper limbs. Well, the upper arms and the upper legs. You know, they feel more solid now. And when we're babies learning to do this, learning to move around. It's generally because we want to get somewhere. We want to find something or reach something. And we try whatever we can. We just experiment. We make these discoveries. First, we're just, you know, we're placed in a position and we can't really move. We learn to roll and then to sit up. It's when we learn to crawl that we, you know, we become free agents. It's a major change. So look, lift one knee up, stand your foot on the floor, and then the other. And so your knees are over your feet, and press down on your feet so that you could lift your pelvis up and down, slowly. You know, so you could feel one vertebra after another lifting from the floor. And organize your feet so that you feel the pressure is equally distributed between the heels and the inside and outside of the front of the foot too. You know, so you can feel your toes on the floor. So you may want to adjust your feet, either move, a, move them closer to your pelvis or wider apart or just whatever you need to feel that sense of stability 
Because when you distribute the effort through the whole foot, it you know feels really solid and it's easy to lift your pelvis up and down and to feel your spine move one vertebra at a time because there's a good solid connection on the ground. When Feldenkrais taught this movement in the Amherst training that he did, he talked about you know, that point when you lifted your pelvis, your knees are sitting on top of your feet and it feels so secure that an elephant could sit there. And it does feel that. If you feel all those arches in your feet, you know, the inside and the outside of your foot, front to the back, like a microcosm of your whole body, And, you know, when you're down on the ground, you have four points of contact. You have your each foot and you have each side of your back. And then you lift your pelvis up into the air and you go from having two, then you have two feet and the two sides of your rib cage or each shoulder. Now stay with your pelvis in the air and move your pelvis side to side. Slowly, in a way that enables you to relax your neck. You know, to relax through your whole back. You could have a couple of goes if you like. You know, come up and then come down again so you let your back soften and round as you come down, as you come up. And then when you're up there, you stay there and you move your pelvis side to side. And as it's moving side to side, notice that the weight begins to shift. So rather than having four points of contact, you know, the feet and each side of the back, when you move over to the side, it becomes three. We have the two feet and you have one side of your rib cage. And notice that point when the you get your pelvis over to the left, say, the right shoulder is no longer on the floor and it becomes really easy to lift up the right arm. Try that. Go side to side and feel that moment when it becomes easy to lift your arm and you could do that. Roll over to the side and you press on the opposite foot and then you can lift the opposite, that arm. So if I'm moving over to the right, move my pelvis over to the right, the left arm becomes available. If I push on the left foot, I can reach away above and behind me with my left arm. Come back down, rest for a moment. Sense each side of your tongue and your mouth. Remember the 16 muscles of the tongue. Move your tongue side to side slowly and think of the whole volume of your tongue from top to bottom on each side and from front to back, right down to where the larynx is. And think right through the tongue. You could sense, you know, the tongue is a metaphor for your whole body. So, you know, if there's somewhere in the tongue that is not as easy to sense, is, you know, when you imagine the head is like the tip of your tongue and the feet is like the back and sides of your tongue. But, you know, is there a, com a similar place in your body that's not as easy to sense? Relax your tongue as you move it side to side. Maybe roll your pelvis with your knees up. Have your knees up. Standing your feet on the ground if you're not doing it already. Tongue side to side and rolling your pelvis.
could roll your head too. Feeling the whole of your body, front to back, side to side, the weight pressing into the ground. And all the muscle on the inside and outside of each leg as your pelvis rolls. On each side of your arms and hands as your rib cage and shoulders roll. Notice yourself in space, in your visual field. How your body is oriented here, rolling slowly, so side to side. And then stay in the middle. Press on your feet, raise your pelvis. Move your pelvis over to one side. You know, say the left, and then you press till the left arm the right arm becomes free, then press on the right foot and reach over into space with your right arm. Feel that connection between the right hand and the right foot as you're pressing. Then come back down. Feel yourself in the middle. It's that moment when your weight is solidly over the three points rather than the four that it becomes easy to lift that other limb. Feel that. Lift your pelvis again. This time move over to the move your pelvis over to the right. And feel that moment when you ride on the right shoulder and the left shoulder, the rib cage is already beginning to roll and lift and it becomes effortless to lift your left arm. And then if you press on the left foot, you can reach up and out behind you, rolling over the right shoulder and then come back down. Let everything relax. And then try it again, raising your pelvis, this time moving over to the left. And really feel that moment when your rib cage begins to roll over to the left and your right arm becomes free. And then lift the right arm, look over to the the left side, press on the right hand so that you could reach over to the left and grab something with your right hand and come back down again. And if you're a baby and you're reaching over to grab something, could be a rattle or a toy or something interesting, you'd probably want to put it in your mouth and taste it. There's this hunger to know, you know, through touch we understand things. And through our tongue, I think we understand how it relates to us. So press down on your feet. Lift your pelvis and now move it over to the right. This time, sense your tongue. As you move your pelvis over to the right, the left arm becomes free. Think of the thing you're reaching for. You're going to put it in your mouth and touch it with your tongue. Maybe extend the tongue. (laughs) Try that once again to each side. Just the idea of reaching for something, wanting to taste something. Lift your pelvis up, move it over to the the left. And then come down. And then one more time, reaching up and moving over to the right. With your tongue this time. And then come back down and rest.
And once again, feel that softness through your body, that ability of everything just to let go. You know, because it's feeling when we move side to side, when something has the pressure taken off it. That's what we're learning to do. So roll onto your stomach once again. This time, have your forehead on the ground or your cushion. Hands by your side, by your um, you know, elbows and palms on the ground so that you could lift your head. Maybe you'll spontaneously move your elbows in some sort of a position so it's easy to lift your head up and rest on the elbows. And then look side to side. Look side to side. Look down towards your foot. Feel the way you can roll. And look around, look. And listen and smell. It's all those things that you could taste. And have your knee out to the side, one knee out to the side, and now press on both knees so that you could lift yourself up once again onto your elbows and your knees. And if you've got one knee out to the side, it probably feels a bit ungainly. Come back down, but you can go up and down like that with your knee over to the side. Up and down. But there's a certain point that it would be useful probably to move the other, the other knee or the other elbow in. How do you do that? Once again, feel stay up here this time. And feel if you shift your weight, it could be, depending on how your arms are organized, you might move your rib cage over to one side or you might move your pelvis closer to that leg and it will free up one limb. So do that. So you could move the other limb in closer and then shift your weight and then bring in the other limb. And then just come onto your hands and knees so that they're in the middle. And you're balanced there. You want your hands and your, not your hands, your elbows and your hands and your knees. And consider each side of your body. Move yourself side to side now. You could let your head hang, you know, make it easy. And notice as you go side to side how each side of your body responds. You know, as you're moving your pelvis over to one side, can you feel the pelvic floor on that side? Tighten a little bit. You will become more toned. You know, bring your weight right onto that side. And, and notice how the leg becomes activated, becomes ready to actually lift. And move your pelvis over to, say, the left. Move your pelvis right over to the left till you feel that moment where the right leg begins to, you know, you could move it. It becomes light. Come back to the middle again. And then move over to the left again till you feel that point that the right knee becomes light. And could you just move the right knee backwards a little bit? And then bring your weight back. So now <coughs> you have your weight on the left elbow, the left knee, and the right knee. And now the left, that means the right elbow is free. So move the right elbow back. So now come into the middle. So you have your weight on four points of contact. Now move your body right over to the right till you feel, well, interesting. The way I've got my legs, it feels like my, I have my weight now on my right elbow, the right knee, and the, the left knee. So I can move my left elbow freely. So I'm going to slide my left elbow back. For you, maybe because of the way your legs are organized, it might have been the knee that moved first. And now I move my pelvis back. So I have the pressure now on the two elbows and the right knee. Now I move my left knee back. And then I shift my weight across. 
and once again I feel there's that point there where I have the I have the weight on the left knee and elbow and the right knee and the right elbow is free and now I slide the right the elbow back and then I can move the right knee back and then I shift my weight across to the right side and the same thing can go on one at a time you can go forward in the same way move your weight forward and feel you have the weight on the elbow and knee of one side and the, either the hand of the knee of that side and then you move say if you're going forward the knee forward first and then you move your pelvis further forward so it's on both knees and say the right elbow then you can move the left elbow forward then shift your weight naturally over to the left so now it's on the left elbow and the left knee and the right elbow and now move the right knee forward and move the pelvis forward till your right elbow can come forward then shift your weight across to the right and go through this same process moving the knee and then the elbow you shift your weight over to that side till the knee becomes free you can move it effortlessly slides forward and then the elbow comes forward then you shift your weight across till that that you know sense that moment of freedom when the weight is so solidly on the three limbs that the fourth one can move effortlessly that side to side motion backwards and forwards and then leave that for a moment lie on your back and rest you sense how you feel now as we reorganize our weight from four points of contact to three we shift everything hence the way you feel now lying here maybe you're more aware of the volume of your body You know, first, it's really important you get a clear sense of the midline. And then it's a really important to get a clear sense of stability so that something becomes free to move. Notice as you relax here, and the sense of volume of your body all the way through. So we've been focusing on the knees and the elbows really as the weight bearing you know what happens when we bring our hands into it sense your hands now on each side inside and outside of each hand hand as extension of the arm as extension of the whole head neck and torso of the whole body But feel now, as you roll over onto your stomach, you know the way each side interacts. Roll onto your stomach once again. And have your weight on your elbows so that you're lifted up as if you're 
you know, lo facing a campfire or something, or looking away from a campfire, warming your feet. And notice your hands. There's two bones in the forearm, the elbows. You know, maybe shift yourself side to side so you can feel the sensation inside and outside each arm. You know, from the front and back of your underarm. And the shoulder girdle, that's the shoulder blade at the back, through to the spine. And the collarbone in the front, from the front of the underarm. And down through the two forearms, you know, rotate your forearms here. Feel that freedom you have there. And now, maybe bring your weight, and notice your pelvis is rolling as you're moving yourself side to side. Let your pelvis roll. Have your weight over on the left side. Does that, and now press down on the right hand in a way that you could lift the right elbow. You know, you lift the right elbow, it lifts the shoulder, you lift yourself up. But does it feel comfortable? You know, is, does it need to be in a different position? Or does your left elbow need to be in a different position? Find a, a different position with your arms and move yourself over to the left and press down on the right hand. Lift the elbow. Try to find a way, you know, where you have your weight, rather than being on four points, it's now on three, and that you're free to move the right arm. You're free to press the arm into the floor and lift yourself up and look around. You know, find somewhere else. Move an, your left elbow into another position and then place your arm in a right hand in a, and elbow in a different position so that you could move your weight over to the left and push down on the right hand effortlessly. You know, to the extent you, you could even draw the right leg up as well. You know, it's all about finding that position so that you, you can sense your weight is balanced over that position and then the other limbs become free to move. Try that to the left now. You know, press down the left hand. Lift your, your pre you know, you lift the arm, the shoulder, and you roll a bit over to the right. But once again, you know, at first you may try it and it doesn't feel as comfortable. Play around with where you have your hands and your elbows. You know how they work relative to each other. So that you can find a place to press on this left hand, and it becomes effortless to lift yourself up. You, know, you can lift yourself up even to the extent you could roll your pelvis and move your left knee out to the side. And feel, you know, the whole hand. You know, organize yourself in a position where you, you can feel each of the five fingers. You know, the force goes from the whole hand right through the in the middle of the forearm and through the center of the upper arm, through the center of the shoulder so you can move. Leave that for a moment, just rest on your stomach. Now notice what that enables you to feel through your um, hands and forearms, you know, the sense of their connection through to your whole head, neck and torso, to your pelvis. Or even through, you know, through the pelvis, through to the opposite limb, you know, from one hand through to the, to the foot. You'll notice, is it easy to feel through to the foot on that side or the other side? You could roll yourself side to side a little bit just to, to sense that. Hands. And now put your elbows and hands on the floor again and press down. Do it in a way that you can press down on the left hand and lift yourself up and then move yourself over to the, over the left hand so that you could raise the right hand. Now, if that's not comfortable on your lower back, just only go, you know, do one side. 
But if it's comfortable, you could lift up both hands, both arms. You, know, you may have to shift your weight more into the side, roll your pelvis in order to do it. You know, then you can have this sense of the arm, each arm being connected through the whole head, neck and torso. You know, it's a different organization each time. Now, leave your elbows there. This time, move one knee slightly out to the side. Lift up that knee, then bring the other knee up. And so you're on both knees. And now shift your weight over to the left and press down on the right hand and raise the right elbow and shoulder. Yeah. And then do the same thing, move over to the right side. Move your pelvis and rib cage over to the right so that it becomes effortless to press down the left hand and lift your left shoulder. And then push from the, keep your left arm straight. You can see your left arm and right elbow is on the floor. And push on the right elbow so your weight goes over to the left so that you could lift up the right elbow as well. So you're on your hands and knees now. Keep the weight on the left hand and both knees. Let your right arm bend so the elbow goes down. Then transfer your weight over to the right so you could once again put down the left elbow. And do it in reverse. Move over to the left elbow. Press down the right hand and straighten that arm. Lift that shoulder and then push from the left elbow and knees over to the right hand till the left arm becomes free and push on the left. Move yourself side to side like this, bending one elbow, then the other, and feeling that moment when, you know, you can lift your arm lightly. You know, that is what elephants do. They can be so precise in the way they raise each foot. Because they, they're solidly balanced over the other one. Now stay on your hands and knees this time. Feel your hands and knees. You know, you can bend your elbows a little bit. You know, and that spreads the weight. You know, find a place for your hands where the, the pressure is distributed evenly through the whole hand. And if your elbows are a bit, st or your wrists are a bit stiff because you're not used to being in this position, just do it in short bursts. Or you could even be on your knuckles if you like. Or just come down and do it on the elbows. But, you know, also if you have your elbows bent a little bit, that will probably enable you to spread the effort on your hands. Now, in this position, move yourself side to side. And feel how the weight shifts. You know, do you have your weight more on your knees or your hands? If your wrists aren't that comfortable, you probably have all the weight in your knees, which is good. But s stay over to the right side. Move your weight over to the right. Move your pelvis back till you feel you have the weight on the right hand, the right knee, and the left knee, and that the left hand becomes really smooth. Lift that hand up and down in a way that you can soften the hand, the fingers. You know, you could lift it up and place it down noiselessly. And then lift the hand, move it behind, back a little bit. And then feel the press, you know, the weight going onto that left hand, because it's now under the shoulder probably. So you have the hand the weight on the two hands and the right knee. Now Feel that moment if you press on those three, the two hands and the right knee, where the left knee becomes so light you could move it back and you could place it down effortlessly. And then shift your weight over. You have four points of contact now, but move it over to the left and back slightly till you feel you have the weight on the left hand, the left knee, and the right knee, so that you could slowly lift up the right hand. Slowly lift up the right hand and then move it backwards and place it down like an elephant, noiselessly. And then the weight slowly shifts onto there. 
and then you move your right knee back and then move your weight across so now you have the weight on the right knee and the right hand and the the well either it'll be the left hand or the left knee depending on <laughs> how far you've moved back and move which one feels light move it back then move your pelvis back and allow the other one to follow and then come forward in the same way so you move your weight over to one side and then forward till you feel one limb become soft and available and then move it and then continue moving your weight forward till the other limb becomes available and light and then move your weight to the other side and do the same thing when you're going forward it's probably the knee that's moving first and then the hand but you know in order to walk silently like an elephant to do this efficiently what we need to do is to really tune into that moment where we're supported and one limb will feel free so move that one whether it's the knee or the hand and then shift go side to side moving one and then the other and you know what do you need and now just get into the rhythm of it moving one and then the other understand how your body works moving one and then the other placing the hand and the knee down softly lifting it so you feel that gradual moment when you know everything shifts you know through the whole body you can go backwards and forwards on one step if you like you know moving the hand back placing weight on it then taking the weight off and coming back just to feel how the whole body reorganizes itself it's as satisfying as tuning into your breath and you know if you once you get the hang of it you can move just feel the rhythm of it going side and then moving one and then the other limb and then moving to the other side moving one limb then the other limb backwards and forwards And what does your torso do as you actually shift your weight from one to the other? You know, how does your head turn? How do you, you know, it's the beginnings of rotation there. And look where you're going now. Once you get into the rhythm of moving side to side. Look, and just consider each side of your body. All those things out there you can put in your mouth. Absolutely lovely. So roll down onto the floor with that same sense of precision notice how you feel now
there's no right or wrong in the nature of this exploration, as you can probably feel now. Um, still you feel lying on the ground. It's really just coming to understand your structure, your body, and how you can shift it. Shift your weight so that one part of you becomes free. And you'll see, it influences everything. So slowly roll onto your side, noticing you know, how you're shifting your weight, and come up to stand. Notice your hands and your feet, your tongue, the each side of your body, your capacity to look around. And then as you walk, your capacity to shift your weight smoothly, you know, to feel that softness of how you lift your feet and how you place them down. So you too can walk with the grace and power of an elephant. <laughs> 